Hey, Joe Martin here. You've seen our commercials over the years, and you may be wondering, what's in it for me? Well, ITI Technical College has been selected by Forbes magazine as a top 32-year college. But even more than that, the reason we do this is you. Our tagline is, for a better life. And we mean that, for you to be able to have the life you've always dreamed about, to do the things for your family you've always dreamed about. And it can begin here, where we are dedicated to your success, because here at ITI, this is Sports 225 with Lee Feinswag, and I'm Lee Feinswag. We're in our 24th year. If you count Sports Monday and Sports 225, and the only way that could happen is, well, it's my show. Hey, my best friend, Lee the Sports 225 is brought to you by Breck. And now, me. Around this time, yeah. 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 well, it's Sports 225, and I'm lucky enough to be joined by Scott Rabelais, the erstwhile sports writer and a columnist for The Advocate, who may have either been the first or second guest when we did Sports Monday the first time in September 1995. Hey, can you imagine? I think How old were you in 1995? <laughs> no, no, no comment. I think your first guest was actually um, Dale Sid, Weiner, Sil, Sid Caesar, wasn't Sid, it? <laughs> Sid Caesar and Imogene Coca. <laughs> it was you and Dale Weiner though the first. Well, show. Was it? Was it Dale? Yeah, Weiner? and I don't yeah. remember the order. Uh, I don't know, but yeah. I was on the on the first show. It was yeah, very and very exciting. It hasn't gotten any better since. But thank, <laughs> thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Um, you, you, you to paraphrase the uh, sentence in your column on. Um, Tuesday, you know, basically there are a lot of things in life you hope for, not one of them is for your name to be in the same sentence with the words subpoena and wiretap, <laughs> you know, right. it's one of my goals. Um, that was a, a tricky column that you had to write about Will Wade and, the, and, and you know, his it impending was. testimony because, yeah. you know, you don't, you don't want to hit the hammer on it, but on the other hand, you want to make sure that people understand the gravity of the situation. Yeah. Uh, it, it's always easy when you're a thousand miles away to say, oh, you know, they're doing shady things. And it's, uh, well, when, you, when you're right here, and, 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 and not because you have to be intimidated by the people you cover, but, but I just... You're sensitive you're, to the you're people You're sensitive you and you have to, you have to be fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't look good when a, 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 when a story comes out saying a coach uh, uh, is expected to be subpoenaed in a, in a federal case, a federal bribery case involving college basketball corruption. But at the same time, it's, it's not a conviction. I was talking to a, a, a lawyer friend of, of mine. Uh, so well, the good thing about getting to our age, Lee, you know a lot of people who know things. Lots of lawyers. <laughs> a lot of lawyers, for example. Is that, you know, you could be subpoenaed to support the, the defense's case. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, these two guys who are, who are going on trial. You could be subpoenaed for them to try to shift the blame on you and, and off of their client. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I mean, they, you know, it's, it's hard to say at this point, based on the set of facts that we have, what is in store for Will Wade. But again, it's not good <laughs> on the face of it, but it's not completely damning either. And mm -hmm. I think you have to you have to say both sides. But yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a tightrope to walk sometimes with those, those things. Yeah, your line was funny in his column. He said, uh, you know, being subpoenaed is not one on his bucket list. <laughs> no, <laughs> so I think it that is was not. one of those when you wrote it, you probably Going laughed. to Paris is on my bucket list, yeah, as we've yeah. talked about, but, uh, yes. not, but uh, not, not uh, being subpoenaed. No. Well, the one thing, the, the upside to it is that if Will Wade has to testify, it would be in April. So the season will, will have long been over. Mm -hmm. And so it won't, you know, hopefully, you know, for LSU, which is having such a great season, it not, doesn't become a distraction. On the other hand, you know, the one thing that you, you know, and you can reference things like even Bounty Gate or the current situation with politicians going to jail, don't lie. When you get before a grand jury or a committee or a judge, if you're guilty, say you're guilty, you know, and tell, tell the truth, because that seems to be when they come back and get you the worst. Yeah, and, and uh, this is not just an NCAA investigation we're talking about. This is a, exactly. the this FBI is, is wiretaps, federal, a federal yeah. Yeah. case uh, is going to be in federal court in, in New York, uh, I believe, in, in, uh, in late April. So, yeah, it, it's pretty serious stuff. It's best just to, if there are lumps to be taken, to take them and, and try to move on. And um, it's... Uh, you know, it's it's interesting. Obviously, there is reason to be uh, suspicious is the right word, but reason to to wonder. Yeah, you know, how LSU has recruited so well all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. uh, 
then again, LSU has recruited a lot of good players o over recent years. You know, you know, they got Ben Simmons, who was the number one player in the country a, a few years right. ago. There was a connection. There was a connection. connection, and and yeah. and you can you can say there was a connection with Nas Reed and LSU. Raven Farley, who has since left the women's basketball team, his girlfriend, um, uh, right. and she was already on the women's basketball team uh, when when he arrived, and, and uh, Tremont Waters was going to. Uh, uh, Georgetown, and then they fired John Thompson the third, and he's looking for another school. And Will Wade say, hey, "Hey, you know, taking a shot at him." Uh, you know, so he saw he he was able to convince him of to, to come down here. Uh, Javante Smart, of course, is a local a local guy, right. you know, from yeah. from Scotlandville. So well, when you have a Baton Rouge based school with a roster with kids from New Haven, Asbury Park, New Jersey, um, Mount Vernon, New York, you know, Florida, Florida yeah. kids, you know, that that. So I got I got to tell a story. I don't know if I've ever told this story. To, in the media, but you made me think about you know, the feds and stuff, and you mentioned the FBI. Um, when I was the LSU basketball beat writer, and I want to say it was in the early 90s when this occurred, I had some people tell me that LSU basketball players were no doubt frequenting a local restaurant and getting their meals picked up by a known bookie and gambler. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't want to write that story. I, didn't want, I just flat out didn't want to go there. And I went to Dale Brown and I said, listen to me, you have a problem. If this is all true and my sources on this are really good, um, not the least of which was I was friends with somebody who was a waiter there, you know, mm -hmm. and had other stuff. But, and I said, look into it, take care of it, all right? And, or else I, I have to write something about it, you know, if it, if it becomes a you know, legitimate issue. So, he immediately gets on the phone and finds his FBI. He had an FBI friend. It, you know, <laughs> what a shock, right, that Dale had an yeah, FBI friend. Yeah. And got him on it and found out, in fact, that, that I was right, that this person, you know, of, of ill repute was with his players. Well, he told the person of ill repute how he found out. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, nothing ever came from it, and the whole situation just went away. Stories with Lee, that's how we finished the first segment. It's a good story. It was pretty good, you yeah. know. And, uh, you know, as a beat writer, you, you, much like when we were talking about, to as a columnist, you know, sometimes there's that fine line you walk, you know, how hard do you hammer and how do you, you know, write what you write. Yeah. But you, you, have to, you have to land on the side of what you think is truthful and what is right and, and wrong. And, and, and that's, yeah. if Will Wade is, is guilty of some, you know, recruiting violations, that's, that's wrong. And, and he, should, he and Ellis should pay a price for it. But we're a long way from, from that. Exactly. At least yeah, two, two full months from right. that trial. All right. He's Scott Rabelais. You can read him at theadvocate.com. He's on Twitter at Rabelais ADV, which is short for advocate, I assume. Um, <laughs> That's just another misspelling of my name. There you I'd go. like to get out there. One can only imagine. Um, I'm Lee Feinstein. It's Sports 225. And uh, we'll be right back. I'm the human dislike button. You may recognize me as the guy who enforces rules at Breck Parks. Check out my amazing presentation. Did you know? Motorized vehicles are not allowed in Breck Parks. Sales and solicitation are prohibited without permission from Breck. And my favorite rule, keep Breck Parks clean by placing all trash in trash cans. Come on, you can do this. For more information about these and other Breck rules, please visit breck.org slash hdb. We're back on Sports 225. I'm hanging out with Scott Rabelais, the columnist for The Advocate, who, like me, this past Tuesday night was at the LSU-Texas A&M game, which was an absolutely horrible college basketball game on so many fronts. Texas A&M couldn't put the ball in the ocean from the edge of the pier. LSU was just sloppy and oftentimes disinterested. However, so often we shoot the show on a Wednesday morning, and LSU's going to play that night. So we can actually talk about something yeah. in retrospect. But uh, the atmosphere last Saturday morning, I love morning games, when LSU beat Tennessee was very exciting and very fun. And if you had ever told me going into the end of the season that LSU, Tennessee, and Kentucky would be tied for the lead with a substantial three-game lead over the next closest team, I'd have said, you're nuts. That was back in the preseason. No, exactly. I mean, you thought this could be a good LSU team. You kind of wondered how they're going to put all the pieces together. And 10 games in, you're still wondering that when they lost 
to Florida State, which wasn't a shock, but then they lost to Oklahoma State, which clearly ranks as LSU's worst loss of the season. Yeah, and with, in, with in a, a, tournament a propensity at to go like completely asleep at the wheel for yeah. many minutes at a time. Yeah, yeah. And they lost at Houston, but Houston only has one loss. I mean, they're looking at being is that a, true? Uh, yeah, I didn't they're, realize they're that. looking at being a number two seed right now. If, if wow. the tournament uh, was picked today, probably, maybe even a shot at being a one. But uh, yeah, LSU's. Uh, they're now 23 and 5. Look, I looked this up last night. Lee, this is my column if we're in Thursday's Advocate. Um, th this is 23 wins. shows you how, how up and down LSU basketball history has been. 23 wins is already the eighth most wins for any season in LSU basketball history. There's only been seven LSU teams that have won more games. There's only been four teams that won more regular season games than LSU has to this point. Wow, and 81 would be? 81. Um, 2016, they went to the Final Four? They were right around that. They were right around that number because uh, they won. They won. Now they, they. I think they only won 22. Yeah. 22 because they, they had to win four to get in the tournament. They ended up with 27 wins. I think the 2000 team. Uh, it, it was. It's not very many. And, and so this is kind of getting to be in some rarefied air. As the uh, this is only the fourth team that have, has won that many, and the other three won the SEC title. So I guess 09, 0, uh, 2000, and and the the uh, 81 team, and one of those went to the Final Four. So, so they're getting me in some kind of rarefied yeah. air with, with, uh, with the, those, those other teams. Um, that gives you a lot more history. respect for the programs that perennially win high yeah. 20s and into the 30s. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's not, uh, it's some, some programs kind of like, you know, the Dukes and the Kansases kind of skew things, and mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, yeah, these yeah. seasons don't come around all the time for, for, for everyone. And uh, you know, what, whatever you have to say about LSU and Will Wade, it, it, is, it is enjoyable to see people excited about mm -hmm. college basketball. Because you know, March Madness comes around all the time, and a lot of times you're just, well, you're watching other teams play. You know, but LSU's going to be in it. They're going to be a highly seeded team, a team that pe people uh, like to say is a, tr a trend, has all the pieces to, to make a run to the Final Four. Uh, a lot of factors go into that, but they but they have the, what you need to get there. Bracket matchups and seeding. I mean, right now, that, that LA, makes a lot. right now, logically, LSU would be a three or a four seed, more likely a four, depending on how things go in the SEC tournament. I think LSU is going to win all the rest of its conference games. Mm -hmm. You know, although very tough, very tough game at Alabama. You know, for one, they never play well at Alabama. That's tough, and, and, and at Florida, seems, Florida, both teams, yeah, playing both of those teams on the road, especially Florida, which you know easily could have. Uh, made things worse for him here, you know. But, uh, but, but the point being is that if you get to the SEC tournament, closing it out, closing out the regular season, go there and win, because they're in that double bye situation. So even right. just winning one, you know, might put them in a three seed situation. I think they already locked up the double bye. They did, the, the, yeah. Yeah, at this point. So it's the, <laughs> so you're talking about, you like day games and stuff. The, uh, yeah. This is where the, the, the sports writer, you, you, you don't be, want to be a fan, okay? Yeah. But this is where the sports writer's self-interest comes in. The, the three seed in the SEC tournament plays the very last game on Friday night in Ooh. Nashville of, uh, of the quarterfinals. Which is a 9.30 So Eastern So start, that's going to be like, you know, the, the evening session starts at 6, and then it's 30 minutes after that game concludes, that, that kind of thing. So you're talking about 8.45 tip-off probably. Mm -hmm. you, I do not want LSU to be the right, three no. seed for, oh. for me. You know, the, you know, and if, they, if LSU goes at, least, at this point, wins two out of their last three, mm -hmm. they will at least be the, they'll be the one or the two seed because they'll have the tiebreaker on the team that loses the, the Tennessee-Kentucky game. You know, they still play right. in, uh, in Knoxville um, in, in a rematch of the game in Lexington. So one of those teams is going to have a third loss. Oh, no, it, it's all about us. <laughs> this is but, what I'm but, saying. You know, it's, uh, it's tough, though, because when you got that late night, and then even though you won't play early the next day, that's still tough. It's tough on not just sports writers. It's tough on, on teams. That's why it's so rare that uh, teams are able to march through a conference tournament with their lives depending I'm on just, it. It's just a little surprising. And I think they try to group the teams that are going to play each other. But it's just kind of surprising that the, the, it's not the four seed that has to play the late game. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's the three. Well, TV factors in for it, too. Yeah. And, you know, and, and inevitably, when you think you're on cruise control, then those are the games that go to double overtime or something. You've been to the SEC tournament in Nashville, right? In, I can't remember. It, it's a great place for the, yeah. for, for, for the tournament. I, 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 you know, you, there's a lot of things to criticize with the SEC and college <laughs> administrations and stuff like that. But I think the decision to make the SEC men's tournament have its home in Nashville, and occasionally they go somewhere else. Like last year, the women's tournament was in yeah, Nashville, yeah. and they, they played... Uh, they played it, in St. Louis, I think. Yeah, I never liked going to Atlanta, even though, you know, it had its advantages. All right, I'm about to have a monster coughing fit, so <coughs> I'm holding it off as best I can. Scott Rabelais is here. 
I'm Lee Feinstein. We'll take this break and drink some Dasani water. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hi, I'm the human dislike button. You may recognize me as the rules guy for Breck Parks. Sometimes the rules slip past us, so I put together this amazing presentation. Did you know? Golf practice is only allowed at designated golf facilities. Firearms, explosives, and weapons are not allowed on Breck property. Metal detecting is allowed in some parks, but go to Breck's website to learn more about this and other park rules. For more information, visit breck.org slash hdb. Crazy. I can see that. Welcome back to Sports 225. I'm Lee Feinswag hanging out with Scott Rabelais. Uh, we, were, we were talking about um, some impending trips we have coming up. I've got uh, to go out to uh, Los Angeles and San Diego. And you know, if you took my house and put it where my friend lives, which is just a small house, and my house is actually way bigger than his, and mine would double in value. No, oh, San Diego. Wouldn't you like you know? to if you lift it up somehow and transport you know, it to Southern yeah, in, California? In, in his case, they rent this little small house, and they own rental properties elsewhere, not in San Diego. But trying to buy a place there would just be ridiculous. You know what they say the most expensive state to live in, though, actually is Washington. Oh, uh, Ro the Ross state Del of Washington? Or Washington, Washington D.C. Oh, yeah, right. uh, Ross Dellinger, <clears throat> uh, our former sports writer who, who writes for SI.com and is just you know, a great, a great uh, sports writer, and his wife, uh, uh, Liz, uh, Liz, uh, Liz Crisp, is our, mm -hmm. covers the Capitol for us, but she's going to be our Washington correspondent, so they're moving there. And he was just telling right. me what an you know, one-room apartment is going to cost them in the district. It's just insane. It's like $2,300 yeah. a month or something. Well, yeah, as an aside, uh, an assistant volleyball coach from UCLA um, took a job at the University of Kansas and went into reverse sticker shock. Mm -hmm. Wait, we can, we can buy how much here? We can do how much? Right. And have good schools? Yeah. You know, whereas in LA, it's amazing how many of the coaches at UCLA, who I know, you know don't live anywhere near Westwood for starters, and you know, drive a, a long distance. And they're, and they're well paid. Yeah. Anyway, so be happy you live in the Baton Rouge general area where our real estate prices are very affordable and our taxes are basically non-existent. That's true. And we may be first, last in roads and schools, but we're good in sports, and that's why we have TV <laughs> shows like Sports 225. Somewhere along the line, I forgot to say Scott Rabelais here. Maybe I did. Um, he did. Yeah. Yeah. You've had, you've had a remarkably, you know, well, you, it never stops for you. Not but really. you've had a remarkably busy couple of months, not the least of which is your daughter, Megan, getting married. How about Thank that? You. Yes. How do you my, feel about that? Marrying off daughter. a kid. She's a doctor, um, and she married she a doctor. Yes, they're both in residency, <laughs> and, and um, uh, my, my new son-in-law, Robert, is, uh, is a huge Saints fan. Huge Saints fan. So, he, uh, so the day of the NFC Championship game, I called my son, Nicholas, who, who, was, in, who was one of the groomsmen. And I said, uh, where, uh, he lives in New Orleans now. He just got a job down there. And I said, I said where are you watching the game? He said, oh, Rob got his tickets to the game. He surprised all his groomsmen. Yeah. And he and his dad got them all tickets to the NFC Championship game. They had to sit in like two blocks, but still they were all in the stadium. Wow. And of course, I talked to Robert afterwards, and he's just like, I just can't believe it. <laughs> I said, this doesn't make it better. But think of this. 40 years from now, people will ask you, were you at the game when one of the worst calls in sports history was made? And you'll be able to say, yes, I was. You were at the I, game, I, right? Yes, I was. Yes, oh, sitting way up in the nosebleed, yeah, yes. but you can't see it. Thank I you. have my binoculars, though. I, I was actually, uh, I had, had them out for that, that play. Well, you know, I've talked about this before on, that show, on, the, on the show, but that call. See, I, I am of the belief that officials are honest and want to do their best and are pained greatly when they don't. And those two guys who blew that call probably just feel terrible to this, to this sure. day. I can't imagine they don't. And there was that one in a million chance that the angle, because you look at the two of them, there's a, there's a, the, the contact is here, and you got a referee here, and you got a referee here, and they're both looking. And that one in a million chance where they both just didn't see it happen the right way, and it wasn't a reviewable call. That, I, I honestly believe that, because I don't think either one of them wanted to have a foul occur and not throw a flag if, they, if they should have. Of course. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it was just the, the defensive back for the Rams so out of position, mm -hmm. he was trying to foul. I mean, he was trying right. to just to right. break up the play. No, it's better to give up pass interference than a touchdown. And, and it, well, in a, in a world of histrionics, where even the slightest contact out at midfield from a receiver, and he's like, throw the flag, throw the flag, the Saints player just 
got up and ran. No, he back did. Yeah, Tommy Lee Lewis did, yeah. did not. Yeah. Oh, didn't, didn't, didn't. I mean, Sean Payton went nuts, but right, he right. just yeah, you know, he kind of got up and. And maybe it happened so fast for him that he didn't realize. Right. Either, you know? Yeah, that, that that was an interesting part of it, but it it it, it does illustrate many things. But one of them is. is uh, the NFL you know, is very concerned about a quarterback. If that had, had happened on Drew Brees or on, on the, the Rams quarterback, there would have been a flag, I, I think. For but the, sure. the NFL pays lip service to player safety for a lot of other players. Yeah. Uh, by the way, while we're talking about the NFL, um, how amazing is it that three Louisiana guys are going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame this summer? Johnny Robinson, mm-hmm. who played for the Kansas City Chiefs, where you, you lived many years ago, played for LSU uh, in that great backfield with, with uh, And then they, they won at Tulane, is that correct? Did the did the Chiefs beat yes, the Yes, Super Bowl four. He was in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah and the, if you go the one they won, outside the one they won. of a, yeah, if you go outside of the Riley Center, the Rec Center on the Tulane campus, and there's a big field there where it's a half soccer field and they do intramurals, but there's a, a little little monument with a with a placard that explains that the Super Bowl occurred on this site. It's hard to believe that there was an eighty thousand seat stadium uh, no. right there, it was squeezed in with no parking anywhere. No, no case. parking. Um, no. Uh, he's in Kevin Mawai, who, who I covered right. at LSU, played in the early nineties, and a great and then, guy. And then Ed Reed uh, from Death Stranding, who went to yep. University of Miami, but uh, was a first ballot uh, uh, Hall of Famer. Um, so it's be very nice. Mr. Robinson uh, should have gone in years ago. And I, I did a column last year about his candidacy, and, and he get in on the Veterans Committee. And the guy said because he played his whole, most of his career in the AFL, that that was kind of a there was kind of a bias there. A lot of players with similar stats who played in the NFL right. got in years ago. So it was very, very nice. This could be a very nice thing. I hope I get to go cover it. Uh, I went to Morton, Morton Anderson got in a couple of years ago. It was really neat. It was really neat. Yeah, event. no, I, I went there. I went to Canton, um, but Johnny Robinson, his father, Dub Robinson, for which the LSU. Tennis Stadium was named on campus. It's no longer there now. It's is it the on the Dub Robinson Volleyball Stadium? Yeah, uh, you know, I hope they, they <laughs> put volleyball? up some recognition of Dub. Isn't Robinson it nice? Have you been? It's nice, beautiful. isn't it? It's yeah, I mean, it's you're a big fun. volleyball guy. It's it's they made a nice facility. Yeah, you're gonna like it when the weather warms up and they have home beach volleyball at LSU. It's something you're gonna want to check. And they're out. ranked number four in the country. Their highest they're ranking this week. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Russell Brock and the and the girls get a doing shout good. out. There they're you go. Good. He's Scott Ravelay. I'm Lee Feinswag. We got time for a little bit more of Sports Fifty Five. We'll be right back. Close at dark. You want another? I think they'll pass. Amplified music and sound is prohibited without permission from Breck. No alcoholic beverages on Breck property. Smoking of tobacco products is not allowed. Dislike. Use of fire is prohibited except in grills. Woo. Gotta remember, Breck wants you to have fun but in the right way. For more info, go to breck.org slash HDB. We're back on Sports 225 and coming down the home stretch of another show pre Mardi Gras week. Got a nice best of coming up for you next week, but if I told you what it was, well, you know, I can't remember. That's really why. But it's good. It's good. We wouldn't replay it if it wasn't good. This one's so good, we'll replay it this summer. Oh. Uh, thanks to John Williams from uh, Think JCW for directing the show. Go to sports225.com for all the show listings of when we're on your view, which is Cox 4 and CST, which is shown in like 18 states, and there are people sometimes who watch this show in like Missouri or San Diego, and we thank you, and I wonder why. But, you know, thank, thank you very much. Cool, that is <laughs> cool. Know, yeah, yeah, my partner Ed uh, in San Diego has occasionally, you know, watched it. Because they have Cox cable. Yeah, 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 Cox is big in San Diego. Cox's name's on the basketball arena, uh, yeah. or used at, to be. At, at, at San Diego? San, San Diego I think, State. I think you're right, yeah, yeah. yeah. or one of them, yeah. Uh-huh. San Diego State, if you ever if you ever get a chance to go. And it, the, the campus itself is just okay, and it's not right on the water, but they have a swimming pool outdoor complex there that is of country club proportions. I'll bet. With young starlets just lined up everywhere <laughs> in the sun, and you just go, ah, oh, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Nice place. Um, what you got coming up in the near future for Scott I'm, I'm, I'm going to the SEC tournament in Nashville, uh, and then uh, and put up drum roll because it's his favorite time of the year. Well, then, ladies and then gentlemen, play the, ex- play the hello a friends. experience like no other. <laughs> yes, the Masters is coming up uh, a little later this year. It's like the second. It starts like uh, Masters week starts April eighth, mm. and so it's about as late as it can be. And it's always the first full week of April. So that, yeah, I, I love co- covering college football. I love covering the Saints. And and college baseball and basketball, all those sports, but that's my favorite week of the year. Somebody tweeted you and asked you for advice about going to the Masters. The no, other I saw day. someone. They, they just they got practice run tickets. They were just putting it out there. So mm-hmm. I said, uh, arrive early, and you can park for free. Uh, go take your free picture in front of the clubhouse. 
Uh, you have to wait in a long line, but it goes fast. You're not allowed to bring cell phones into that. Time. Oh, no, no. You right. can leave your cell phone. With it. But the, you, you can bring a camera on, on, uh, on practice days and take pictures with a real camera. It's, it's the only place you see real cameras anymore is at the Masters. You know, I still have one, and people make fun of me when I use it. little happy snappy that's yeah. highly, high quality. Yeah. People make fun of me. Why aren't you using your phone? Because I want to use the camera. You're right. You want to you you yeah. make a nice photo. Yeah. And, uh, but but you know, people are like, well, I've got to be in touch. They have these banks of phones on the golf course. You can call anywhere in the country for free. Is really? Like, yeah, so it kind of discourage you know, to be, okay, you can't bring your phone, but uh, uh, you can call anywhere you want. Well, we will read about <laughs> that and more in theadvocate.com. <laughs> Follow Scott Rabelais there and on Twitter at uh, Rabelais ADV. Thanks as always, sir. Thank the you. The longest tenured me. guest in the history of Sports Monday and Sports 225 and my dear friend. Since Sid Caesar's not with us anymore. Yes, and enjoy <laughs> spending time together. Yes, thank you. Uh, good night. Get out of here. Go away. Just fade out. Get Beat, beat it. By Baton Rouge Bay, that's the site of my story. At Spanish Town Mardi Gras, things can get blurry. See the moors marching, prizes fill the sky. This Spanish Town Mardi Gras, may it never die.